The Grabcast with Sonny and Finn. This week, we give our thoughts on Survivor Series and NXT TakeOver War Games and go over the biggest news from this week's War and Smackdown. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode two of the Grabs Cast with Sonny and Finn. I'm Sonny. With me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, how you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Very good. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Good, good. Um, last week was a success. It was. People are delighted that we're back. Really? It's a successful relaunch. Yes, and people are enjoying the new wrestling-only podcast. Yes, good. So it looks like we made the right choice. I think so. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. Um... There was a lot of wrestling to digest. Boy, was there. Uh, over the weekend and over the last couple of days. <laughs> and we will get into uh, NXT TakeOver War Games and, of course, Survivor Series. Yes, yes. Let's, uh, let's dive into a little bit of wrestling news that we've got so Ooh. far. Okay, okay. So, uh, Chris Jericho was on the Ross Report with Jim Ross. Oh, yes. And he was asked the question as to whether Vince McMahon was aware of his upcoming Wrestle Kingdom match with Kenny Omega. Yeah. To which his response was, yes, basically. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, you, know, he, you know, he didn't want to sort of damage any sort of relationship that he has with Vince McMahon. Yeah, that's fair. And basically, yep, he was informed in advance and he was cool with it. Yeah, makes sense. He's dumb, I can't see Jericho just abandoning WWE just out of nowhere. No. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it makes sense. I mean, he says here, and this is Jericho quoting... Everybody knows that I'm a WWE guy. That's just the way it is. I have been for 17 years, but this is a once-in-a-lifetime dream match. Mm. Agreed. There you go. <laughs> and he says, with a lot of money at stake. Ooh. Ka-ching. And uh, for me not to pursue that, I thought it would have been a crime. And I think Vince felt the same way. Cool. Makes sense. Good yeah. to have Vince. Uh, he also goes on to say that he has never seen a Kenny Omega match. Really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Even I've seen a Kenny Omega match. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Jericho fighting Kenny Omega. Never seen a Kenny Omega match. <laughs> but on top of that, he said he was then going to go and sort of start watching Kenny Omega matches. <laughs> yeah, but he should. Probably a good idea. Yeah, Just yeah. so you know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> Absolutely. Could be the stiffest worker of all time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, in internet wrestling news, Ooh. Uh, Vince Russo oh. <laughs> has uh, taken to Twitter... As he does. This is uh, former somebody, current nobody, Vince Russo. <laughs> yep. Um, former WWE, uh, nope, uh, TNA world champion, Vince Russo. No, WCW, WCW world, world champion. champion. There you go. Yeah, former Wonder WCW love. world heavyweight champion, <laughs> yep. Vince Russo. God almighty. Uh, driving, driving force of the Attitude Era. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Uh, but now just cries and moans on a podcast. Podcasts are dumb. Who does yeah. podcasts? Po- podcasts are stupid. Who does them? <laughs> but... The problem with Vince Russo, and this is the problem that I've got, he's so out of touch with, with what wrestling is now. Yeah. Because they still, like, people like Vince Russo, and there are others, Jim Cornette, mm, yeah, um, I was gonna say him. Taz maybe to a degree, but not as bad. Yeah. Because a lot of people still do have a lot of time for Taz. Yeah, it does uh, right. Fine. But with Vince Russo, they're just very out of touch with the, with wrestling now, and they want it yeah. to still be how it was when, <laughs> They were somebody's. Yeah, pretty much. I got to, yeah, I was going to say James Cornett, um, as well, because I listened to something he, he was going on about recently. And I was just like, what are you on about, you lunatic? <laughs> I mean, these guys, they, they still think wrestlers should look like Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, the big guys. You know. Yeah. I mean, I mean there's still plays for big guys like Braun Strowman, guys like that. Of course, but, but you also have, have to be. make way for people like Samoa Joe and yeah. Kevin Owens who aren't completely stacked, but are still incredibly talented wrestlers. Yeah. But these guys, yeah, they're they're from a a, a a forgotten era. Yeah, from a different time. And they're they're basically catering to the the kind of marks that <laughs> are also believing that wrestling should be like that. Yeah, Re- everything evolves. Wrestling evolves. Absolutely. These guys do not evolve. do not evolve. Yeah. So Vince Russo <laughs> took to Twitter and said, "I guess announcers aren't that excited about Dr- Jordan slash Strowman. Total total no sell." Hey, Corey, Pee Wee Herman called. He wants his suit back. Hashtag tall. Wow, okay. Um, Corey Graves obviously saw this. Yeah. And uh, took the time to respond. <laughs> wow, it's amazing that the driving force behind the Attitude, attitude Era relies on the same insults as my nine-year-old. <laughs> Just shout me out for giving your podcast some traffic. You're a great Christian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm not sure if Vince Russo has responded since, but uh, I, th- I think that's... 
I think he's been blessed. shut down. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Yeah. Uh, he's, oh, he's a, he's a oh, fucking yeah. tall Vince Russo. He's an idiot. <laughs> What's yeah. he doing? Big time idiot. Idiot. Stupid idiot. idiot. Stupid idiot. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's uh, been some returns and stuff this week. There has. So basically, guys, if you used to listen to our podcast when it was the Games and Graps podcast, Ooh. and before that, the Sunny and Finn show, yes, Ooh. we've rebranded a couple of times. <laughs> What's that? Um, we're not going to run down Raw and SmackDown anymore because it takes forever. Yep. And, and you've already seen it. Yeah, <laughs> if you've listened to this, you've already seen it. Yeah. If you're listening to this, you've already seen it and probably just want to hear what we think about it. Yeah. Makes um, sense. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah. This week on Raw, uh, Paige finally returned. She did. She managed to stop being an idiot for a week and not posting pictures of herself on Instagram backstage. Yeah. And she actually managed to come out. Yeah. They probably sort of said, look, <laughs> stop doing that and we'll consider bringing you back this week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they have. And it was an interesting return. Yes. She uh, had friends. Um, she, yeah. They had uh, Maddie Rose and um, Sonia Deville uh, from Deville. NXT. Yeah. Uh, Maddie Rose has had like one match on NXT. Maybe. Ah, push, yeah. I mean, I know she was working NXT house shows. <laughs> yeah, that's fair, I guess. Um, um, apparently, you know what? She she looks like she shouldn't know how to wrestle. If that is, she I, looks I, like, I mean that in the nicest <laughs> possible way. She looks like a blonde Eva Marie. That you know what? That's exactly what I was going to go for. Yeah, she uh, looks like a blonde Eva Marie. Yeah, that's um, probably why she's been called up. <laughs> Eva Marie couldn't wrestle. Very true. So you know, people are going to make that same assumption about Mandy Rose. However, apparently she does work very hard and is actually quite good and has picked it up very quickly. Good. Um, good? Yeah, sure. And also, it's apparently why she hasn't been on NXT much because they're so high on her. Oh. They basically just wanted her to go... They wanted to fast-track her to the main roster. So that's right. why you've not seen Mandy Rose on NXT much, apparently. Fair play. Um, Sonya Deville, mm. I knew her um, as something else on NXT. Yeah, it was a Donna, Donna Perrazzo. No, no, there's two. I think <laughs> this is Diana Berenato. Ah, oh, that was the one. But there is also a Diana Perrazzo. Why do I change it? Uh, but <laughs> My brain hurts. she has been Sonya Deville on NXT, apparently. Yeah, but I, I was still under the illusion that she was this other name. So, yeah. Um, interesting <laughs> one. Names. She's like the kickboxer type Yeah, lady. it's like an MMA fighter looking lady. It's a very strange bunch, isn't it? A, a strange group to put together. Yeah, they don't seem to blend well together. I mean, appearance-wise, I mean, I don't know. It's a weird one. One needs to wait and see what Paige happens kind of things. and uh, Sonya, uh, okay. Sure. But Mandy and Sonya, not so much. Yeah, it kind of doesn't kind of all went out. It's a pretty looking... Oh, look at me, I'm so pretty. Uh, I want to take a picture of my boobs on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> whereas Paige and uh, uh, Perrazzo are more like just, I don't know. Deville. Deville, yeah, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> two, uh, two different names. Um, so, so they came in and they uh, attacked Sasha Banks and Alexa? Question mark? Um, Bailey. Bailey, yeah, yeah. Bailey, sorry. And yeah, so, I oh know, Paige they, interrupted Sasha's match. Uh, yeah, there's a fatal four we're going on to decide the number one contender uh, for the women's title. Yeah. And then they interrupted that. Paige came down, music played, big pop, and then they were obviously able to attack all at once. And then backstage, they attacked Alexa Bliss as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It's interesting, and I'm intrigued to see where it goes. Mm. Now, we move on to SmackDown, and something <laughs> very similar happens. Yeah, so they're almost less exactly the same. Yeah, <laughs> but with three different ladies, all call-ups from NXT this time. Obviously, Paige returned because, obviously, she was on the main roster anyway. But yeah. So on SmackDown, Ruby Riot. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Liv Morgan. Yep, Liv Morgan. And who's the other one? Um, Sarah something, isn't it? Yes, I've got a name in there somewhere. I can just find it. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan. Yes. Okay. So Ruby Riot, uh, I think is great. I think she's mm. good and she was probably ready for the move because um, she wasn't really doing much of anything on NXT. She'd had a couple of uh, NXT Women's Championship shots. Yeah. Uh, didn't win. But I think the murmuring sort of were that she was probably good to go anyway. Oh, yeah. She'd wrestled a lot on the indies. Yeah. Um, she was all, already sort of the finished article. Makes sense. Just like Ember Moon. I think they put the title on Ember Moon um, just because she has something to talk about when she goes to the main roster. Yeah, she, she can hold her own on the next team with the title. And yeah. Uh, around her. So Ruby Riot, 
Um, Liv Morgan, I think, had probably outstayed her welcome on NXT. Probably. Uh, had a little run um, when she was on TV and trying to pick up a little bit of steam. But yeah. for me, it wasn't really working for her. So to move her to the main roster, to give her the fresh start, makes sense. But the I think was, it probably makes sense. Yeah, the problem was, and she was around at the same time Asuka was women's champion. It wasn't believable to have a match between her and Asuka no. and be like have any chance of winning. So it makes well, sense no. for yeah, just to be blended back around and now be brought up to the main roster. Yeah. Now that she's quote unquote ready. We'll see. I mean, she was incredibly <laughs> green. In, she was, in yeah, NXT. Then, yeah. I mean, just when you see her, you just think, yep, she looks, she, she looks nice. Um, the entrance <laughs> and stuff is cool and yeah, she's got a great look, but in the ring, she just wasn't that great. Yes. I believe she's come along since then and, uh, but yeah, we'll see. See where she goes. And with the other one, Sarah Logan, I have to be honest, I don't know a lot about her. Yeah, she's, again, she's one of the people that's kind of showed up every now and again on NXT, but didn't, I can't recall any matches she's actually had. No. Um, was she in the women's tournament? I can't remember. Maybe. If she was, she went out in the first round. Yeah, I mean, uh, she, she, she's not, I mean, people like, just like us, probably saw her and thought, who's that? Yeah, I even wrote that in my notes. And so, I said, like, Ruby Wright, Liv Morgan, and Sarah Logan, in brackets, who? Yeah. <laughs> Which one's that? <laughs> I mean, I watch NXT and you watch NXT, mm. and I still don't know who she is. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. it's, it's, she can't. She she's probably somebody who has been squashed by Ember Moon, has been squashed by Oscar, yeah, and you know, and probably just hasn't had a good go in NXT uh, as far as winning matches goes. But they obviously think she's probably ready to go up to the main roster. Yeah, that's fair enough, I guess. So they attacked. Uh, they came out of the. I can't. I can't remember the way around they did it. I think they came out of the crowd and then they went backstage. Uh, yeah. Is that right. the right way around? So they came, they, they attacked Charlotte. Oh, no, I think inter- it, no, I think it was the other way around. I think it started off in backstage because they interrupted Naomi, which is then the makeup done. Yeah, that's right. And, and then, then they beat her up. Yeah, and Becky Lynch. Like, shut the Becky. door. Ouch. Yeah. And <laughs> then they interrupted the women's championship match that was going on uh, between Charlotte and Natalia. Yes, that's right. Um. Yeah, okay. And made a statement and stood tall. Hmm. as the new faces of the women's division. Yes. Do you want to ring in his triangle? Do it finishes. Yeah. <laughs> so that is five new women and a returning page in the space of two days. Yes. Basic question, who's left on NXT? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ember. Uh, Ember. Nikki. Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce and Billy, Billy Kay. Kay, who would have been my choices to go up. Yeah. Mostly. I thought for certain they would come up. Yeah. It would have made more sense to have Paige and those two, opposed to Mandy Rose and what's her face. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. You've got to have someone left in NXT, I suppose. So the rumour that I read today is that this is possibly... The reason for the influx of women <laughs> um, is potentially due to a women's Royal Rumble match. Oh, interesting. Okay. So at the minute, I think there's 11 women on Raw and 11 women on SmackDown, hmm. which makes... is 22, obviously. Two of those are champions. You're so right. That makes 20. 20. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um to be in a Royal Rumble. Yeah. You don't need a 30-woman Royal Rumble. True. You could have it, and you could have some people from NXT come in. Uh, you could, you know, you or you could have maybe a couple of returning legends. You could have Lita in there or whatever. Um, but a, a 20-woman Royal Rumble is fine. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, you could do that. And you could maybe have it at the start of the Royal Rumble, or you could have it in the middle of the... You don't have both Royal Rumble matches back-to-back because that's stupid, and yeah, that's we'll lose the crowd <laughs> yeah. so quickly. I wouldn't start one in the end. Yeah, Forget that makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be cool. Mm, yeah, I'll be down with that. I, I still would have had Billy Kane and Peyton Royce come up. Mm, yeah, probably. Unless, you know, they're going to keep pushing uh, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay to take the belt from Ember Moon before she makes the eventual leap to the main roster. Maybe, maybe. Mm. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Mm, it is. So, going back to Raw now. Mm-hmm. And we had a title change. We did. An interesting title change. We did. And a big title change. <laughs> Very big. So. Grand Slam. We now title have change. another Grand Slam champion. Yes, indeed. And who is it? Drum roll. <laughs> Roman Reigns, lol. Oh my God. Who'd have thunk? Yeah. <laughs> like, as soon as they announced that match, I was like, oh, okay, he's winning. Yeah. <laughs> right, Roman's new IC champ, got it. Yeah. So <laughs> Roman Reigns beat The Miz in the main event of Raw. He did. Good match. Uh, the Miz is off to film the Marine 6, so this sort of in makes 67. sense. Yep. Um, so Roman Reigns is now a Grand Slam champion and he'll probably carry that belt until he eventually fights Brock at WrestleMania, WrestleMania. and wins Sorry. and wins <laughs> uh, yeah 
I'm okay, I'm okay with that. I if Vince I mean, needs to drop it, Roman's fine. I'm okay with Roman. We're not, we're not, we're not Roman haters on this podcast. <laughs> we're not, no. We're not those kind of um, IWC marks <laughs> who yeah. will take to Facebook and post their videos about... <laughs> oh fucking Roman man it's been shoved down our throats we're way past Roman being shoved down our throats now <laughs> yeah that was two okay, years yeah. ago exactly. we're now just at a point where Roman is inevitably going to be in the main event yeah it's fine and it's cool hey look if the Int- if the Intercontinental Championship is going to be thrust into the spotlight because of Roman Reigns while Brock is inevitably going to be off TV until at least 2018 now mm. uh, until at least January the beginning week of January or whatever um, then fine the IC, the IC title needs to be there needs to be a title to fight for on Raw because exactly. Brock isn't going to be here now until the Raw Rumble yeah yeah bloody Brock yeah <laughs> so who well, yeah sure fine hmm. I'm blaming it yeah I am it does make me think that the Shield uh, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins are going to get the tag titles back as well probably so yeah, they're be sort champions. of running the division yeah because there has to be because I know we've got Clash of Champions in December. We do. Uh, which looked like a SmackDown pay-per-view because Charlotte was on yeah. the advert for it. Uh, yeah, and also the Jim Mahal versus AJ Styles is going to be a thing. Yeah, so, uh, so there must be another Raw pay-per-view in... Is it TLC? Is that, is that the December one? Maybe. No, let me have a quick Google. Okay. Because I'm sure TLC is usually... Oh, no, have we already had it? We've already had TLC, haven't we? Yeah. That's an upcoming WWE Z. Alright. So we're going to have a quick look. Wikipedia. Thank you, Wikipedia. I've been every pay per view ever. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Uh, December. Oh, I think Last of Champions is the last one of the year, apparently. Oh, is it going to be both then? Uh, it's going to be SmackDown. Just SmackDown? Yeah. Okay, no Raw pay per view. So that means they'll have a bumper edition of Raw. Probably. In uh, in December. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, Raw's live on Christmas Day this year, isn't it? Oh, yeah, this. Huh. Jesus. Poor guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas, you're working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, fair, it's no different to the NBA. They they play matches on Christmas Day. True. That's oh, fucking that. harsh, isn't it? It is pretty harsh. That's harsh. Um, apparently, there might be a roadblock in maybe before, in January before wait, the Rumble. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wasn't Roadblock because there was two, wasn't there? They had Roadblock, which was like a WWE Network special, yeah, like a house, like a glorified house show that they filmed and give a name, pretty much. But then there was Roadblock End of the Line, which they had earlier on this year, I believe, February or something. Yeah, I might be reading that wrong. Hold on, oh, no, I guess but that's no, that's completely wrong. Um, it's okay, that's cool. Weird. I think knows. Who knows? Shrug. All right, but T- I think. TBC. Um, yeah, TBC. <laughs> I think uh, the Shield will get the tag team titles back, so they'll they'll basically be running the Raw Championship situation for the yeah. meantime. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, so yeah, AJ Styles is going to challenge is uh, defending his championship at Clash of Champions against Jinder Mahal. Is indeed. Do you think he'll win it back? Uh, no, no. I think, I think pretty much given up on the new experiment now. Really? Apparently, apparently, Tick Styles hasn't been good on the India shows, and uh, so yeah, just kind of, I think it's kind of. Quietly give up and because uh, I know Jinder's Jinder fighting <laughs> Triple H at these these uh, Indian oh, yeah. shows. Yeah. Okay. Because just Triple H fights everywhere these days. Apparently so. Yeah. yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty. That's the major news this week. Yeah. Has uh, been. Oh, and uh, Hideo Itami is going to two hundred five live. Yes. I think we did talk about this last week. We mentioned that he probably was going there. Yeah, yeah. But it uh, has been officially announced. There was like a little vignette that says, well, it was basically coming soon. soon. Yes. So um, a couple of weeks. Probably. That's usually how these things work. <laughs> usually. Unless it's Emily, though, when it be just like 12 months. Forever. And then never. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like he's coming in as a heel as well, because he's scowling on his, uh, oh, really? his promo picture, yeah. Hmm, interesting. And he put on Twitter, uh, respect uh, 205 Live, respect me. Oh, right, okay. So it looks Sounds like he's coming off his heel run in NXT straight into 205 Live as the heel. Yeah. But then there'll be, it takes on Enzo, that'd be heel as heel. That'd be weird. Uh, unless Enzo loses it before. Maybe. Mm, who, sure. knows? who knows? We'll see. I, I think he'll come in as a heel. Yeah. He might not. I mean, he should be a major player on 205 Live. He should be, <laughs> for sure. Should be. I hope they bring him in on Raw and not 205 Live. Yeah. Like, introduce him to the Cruiserweight division actually on Raw. Yeah. That makes sense. Haven't inter- interfered a match or Because something. the crowd's dead for 205. Pretty much. Just have him on Raw. Yeah. That makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, 
Uh, like we said, there was a lot of wrestling to digest over the weekend. Oh boy. And uh, we did our predictions for both NXT, TakeOver, War Games and the Survivor Series. And we're going to go through both. Now, how did you yes. feel about the weekend's wrestling? Did you enjoy it? Yes, it was good. It was decent overall. Um, NXT was excellent. NXT was excellent. Let's start with that. Yeah, let's start with that. Cool. So it had the two rings, obviously, because it's going to be War Games. Yeah. Um, so the first match of the night was Cassius. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, <coughs> no. Versus uh, Lars Sullivan, mm. uh, future WWE 2K18 uh, DLC character. <laughs> you know, Lars touching Sullivan. on that, actually, because we touched on Andrade not being in it. Yeah. Apparently, he didn't want to be. So really? I, I tweeted 2K, right? Yeah. I, I tweeted WWE games and said, where's, where's, uh, where's Almas? FFS yeah. <laughs> and uh, I got some tweets back from like other randoms who are obviously going to comment on the post or whatever yeah. and they just put uh, a couple of them were like apparently he didn't want to be in the game oh weird which okay. I think is fucking rubbish because <laughs> the fans want to I, I would have been Andrade I like him He's yeah good. Yeah. plus why don't why would you not want to be in it yeah, who knows it's, it's like free it's like free money <laughs> yeah. Why not? I could take it. I don't know whether it's true or not. I don't know, but he there was the two separate people said that to me, so hmm. I don't Interesting. know. Weird, but yeah, that that uh, DLC pack is actually available now. Oh right, okay. Just download that. Yeah, I'm never late. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So guess it's only about Lars Sullivan. Uh, it was decent. It was kind of a squash with Lars Sullivan, as you kind of expected. Um, it was. I didn't hate it. Yeah, it was alright. Guess it's only put in a good. Uh, a good match and I knew he would I knew he'd probably try and bring the best out of Lars and yeah yeah to be honest Lars looked good he did a good job he's pretty agile for a big guy hmm. and you, see, you know sometimes big guys can look quite stiff yeah yeah uh, but he didn't I thought he looked good yeah it's alright oh, I'm okay with him um, and anyway, so when they did like it knocked him down a couple of times but uh, kicked out like not one and then I know um, Lars hit his, his finisher the freak accident which is a Crappy name and kind of crappy finisher, if I'm honest. Yep. But, uh, so yeah, so Lars won, which we both predicted. Yep. So we better get a point there. He was never going to lose. No, there's no way. No <laughs> way. Trying to push a new big guy to know he can't have news. Yeah, no. Um, that, that, that is Ono's role now. Yeah, pretty much. Poor Ono. Please put over the new guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, poor Ono. Uh, so we've got uh, Alistair Black versus the Velveteen Dream. Match of the weekend. Quite possibly, yeah. Um, I, I thought it was bloody excellent I it was loved very, very good it. um i loved the the story building up to it mm. i thought they they showed it in really great light in the uh in the opening vignette yeah and they they just put on a brilliant match they told a great story mm. and really complimented each other in the ring i thought uh, a oh, velveteen yeah. dream won me over new oh, fan yeah. here me too like, big time i thought He's it was great. great yeah um but yeah clearly the best match he's ever had um, on TV at least and uh, yeah he's got a bright future if they use him right yeah I think so I think he's won a lot of people over as well mm. I mean they were chanting his name by the end of the match they were yeah um, deservedly it, so yeah deservedly so it was awesome and I just you know I, when when you see Patrick Clark without all of that Velveteen Dream gimmick mm -hmm. he is very much a generic looking action man performance centre <laughs> graduate yeah, at the moment when he first debuted, he's just like wearing an American flag on his tights. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. And then one of these yeah. guys. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. There's someone else that no one, everyone's going to absolutely hate. <laughs> yeah. Zach Swagger too. They, so they gave him this gimmick that no, has no right to be over in 2017. Yeah. Like, it's just a weird <laughs> gimmick um, in, the, in the same vein as Fandango and uh, Adam Rose and there's probably others, right? Yeah. <laughs> Gold <laughs> Dust, I don't know. Um Gold just obviously worked in 1996 when it was cut, uh, at Cutting Edge. Yeah, yeah. These days, not so much. Mm, yeah. But in, it's, it's in that same mould. Um, uh, oh, um, I don't know. Funkasaurus. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Other people, you know, like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But you know what? He's taken the ball. He's taken what he's been given. He's ran with it and he's made it a very cool character. Yes. And uh, Alistair Black is awesome. Yeah, he's great. So, so good. good. I mean... He's got a he's got such a massive WWE career ahead of him. Oh yeah, for sure. He'll be NXT champion. He'll be he'll be the one to beat Andrade for the belt. Probably, that makes yeah, sense. I think because uh, that they'll they'll just keep lifting him up the card. Um, you can see this just from the way that he's promoted on TV. 
Yeah, yeah. So I think he'll be um, a big player and a future NXT champion before he goes up to the main roster. Definitely. But yeah, this was this match was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, at one point, Dream did like an amazing looking DDT. Yeah. Like wrapped the, I'm not sure what he did. In fact, wrapped the leg and then just like, I don't know, it's great. The spikes right in his head. At that moment, I clapped <laughs> because yeah. I didn't know what he was going for because it, it was so weird. It, I can't even, you know, I can't even explain it. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch the, go and watch the match, right? And you'll know the moment that we mean. Yeah. Because it's, it's like a, it's just the way that he does it. Like, I, I, I literally went, oh yeah, and like, <laughs> I'm watching this in my front room by myself and I'm like, <laughs> like clapping like a fucking idiot. But it was, uh, it, it was, was really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah, at one point there's like, uh, Alistair Black sat down to the match and then Fold Dream sat down. And both of them each other's poses. It's yeah. So cool. It was just the way they told the story of this rivalry that really shouldn't have been any good, but it was brilliant. Yeah. A dream was wearing like his face and Alistair Black's face on his tights. Yeah. Very like, very it was nice. Very Rick Rude. Rick Rude, yeah. Esque, yeah. They Hopefully. even mentioned it. I think when I, as soon as he took his like, um, chaps off or whatever he was wearing. Yeah. Like, they even sort of said, oh yeah, it's like, um, like, like reference to a Rick. Uh, something when Rick Rude had them on his tights as well. Yeah. Something very similar. So that was very cool, I thought. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so the match ended when uh, Dream missed his purple Rainmaker. Good mm-hmm. name. Good name. Um, and get caught, got caught in the ropes and then uh, Black kicked him to death with the Black Mass. Yeah. Very cool looking kick. Yeah, that he that he always makes look amazing. He does, yeah. I know I said last week that I didn't like kicks um, as finishes, but this one looks really that good. That one I'll accept. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. fine. It's very cool. It's like a spinny thing and he does what gets old really well. So yeah, I like it. Yeah, very, very good. Match of the weekend, in my opinion. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, both have Black to win that. So both get another point. It's yep. two all. Uh, I, I gave Velveteen Dream absolutely no chance. But <laughs> yeah. when you watch that match back, it could have gone either way. And yeah, I would have could. been happy with either result in the end. Yeah. Because the match just showed both of them in a great light. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, Dream also kind of won because Alice Black said the same afterwards. He says, Welcome absolutely to true. Velveteen and that's Dream. What, so that's what Dream wanted. Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. Good. Good wrestling. That's yes. how you do it. More of that, please. Yes. <laughs> uh, so then we've got the uh, Women's Fatal 4-Way to crown a new NXT Women's Champion. Mm-hmm. We have Nikki Cross from Sanity, uh, Kyrie Sane, winner of the uh, May Young Classic, and Peyton Royce and Ember Moon. Mm. This was uh, decent. Not the best match of the night. Probably the... Not, I don't want to say worst match of the night, but probably the worst match of the night. Not that, it was, <laughs> not, not that it was bad. I didn't think it was a bad match. No, I, I see what you're saying. I, I, to be honest, I didn't enjoy it, but I didn't enjoy it for um, observational reasons. Uh, yeah, there, there was a couple of uh, fuck-ups, basically. <laughs> it's a bit lightly. Yeah, things uh, were taking, I think, a little bit longer than they should. Like Some of the setups for some of the biggest spots in the match, like um, well, there was a dive to the outside of the ring and the, you know, the ending of the match as well. It was just... yeah. It looked set up. It did. Like people waiting around, like hugging and stuff like that <laughs> for things to happen. It's like, uh, yeah. I mean, you get that in all the time wrestling anyway, but, uh, you do, but in this, it looked been a bit too long. They, they, they felt obvious. longer. Like those, those pauses, especially with the ends when, um, Ember Moon went for the eclipse. Yeah. And then like, Paige and Royce and, uh, Nikki Grant are standing there right next to each other. Yeah. So, well, I wonder what's going to happen here. And you can see bloody Ember, Ember Moon on the top rope. The, yeah. Like maybe <laughs> like they should have stayed down for a little bit longer. Uh, maybe have Peyton Royce and Nikki Cross like fighting each other whilst Ember Moon climbs up the turnbuckle. Yeah. Yeah. And then have them turn around at the same time and have the eclipse hit on them. Yeah. Granted, we're not professional wrestlers nor masters of timing, but. <laughs> yeah. From an observational standpoint and for somebody who's, for two people who have watched wrestling for a very long time, Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that would have been better. Yeah, agreed. And also when they say the replay, that's sort of like Peyton Boy selling the move. He's kind of stood up and there's like a weird spin in the minute. Yeah. It's like a like ballerina spin. It's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of an oversell. <laughs> Slight oversell. Almost like The Rock selling the stunner from back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he like bounces all across the ring <laughs> and hits the ropes and jumps. Uh, but it, it was fine. This match. Um, Ember Moon obviously ended up winning with a double eclipse. Uh, uh, I had uh, Kyrie Sane to win. You had Bajan Royce, so neither to get a point there. Yeah. It's still to wall. What do we know? What I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm speaking to a friend of mine who does listen to the show. Um, Thanks, Ren. He was sort of saying that, you know, aside from her look and the awesome finisher, Ember Moon's fairly bland. <laughs> I'm not a big fan myself, I have to be honest. It's boo. It's an age woman. No, um, 
No, I love women. Sunny loves women. <laughs> but Sunny's just not a big fan of Ember Moon. Um, not because yeah. she sucks or anything like that. She's just, she doesn't excite me like Oscar excited me. That's fair. You know, uh, like, I think Peyton Royce is great. Mm. I think she's a very good wrestler as well. Not just a good looking lady. She's a very good wrestler as well. And she, yep. watching her, she, you know, excites me. And I wanted, I wanted to see her do well. But with Ember, she's already the complete package. She's already built. She's got a great finisher. She could just be on the main roster. She doesn't need to be in developmental. That's true. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm with, um, my friend here. I do think she's just a little, just okay, sure. Um, she's got the championship by default because she's probably the best there now. It makes sense. I see what you mean. Yeah, she could easily go on the main roster and just be fine and fit in perfectly. Um, mm. Yeah, she doesn't need to be on NXT. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. I like okay. She'll lose it eventually anyway, so oh, yeah. I'll, just, I'll, I'll just wait for that day. <laughs> yeah, I think Paige will probably win it off her. I hope so. Yeah. I really hope so. I want them to do well because that that you know people will hate them for their characters. <laughs> that's the point. They're heels. That's the point. And that, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, uh, on the night, people were seemingly rooting for Peyton because of the, she was getting the most cheers. And when she didn't oh, yeah. win, they booed. They did boo a little which bit, Which is yeah. uh, not <laughs> what WWE wants you to do. Yeah, yeah. They want you to cheer Ember, and they want you to boo the Iconic. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, that brings us to uh, Andrade Cien Almas versus Drew McIntyre for the NXT title. Mm. Um, this didn't go the way he looked expected at uh, all. I don't think it went the way... Anybody expected. Yeah, nobody had Almas to win this. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> and yet, if you had Almas to win this, you had insider information. That is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Because it just, I, you know, I thought, okay, this is a cool few for Almas. Um, it's good to see him finally getting into some sort of decent position. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the on the NXT roster, and he'll lose, and maybe they'll just fast track him to the main roster or something. Maybe. Um, but no, that didn't happen. <laughs> didn't happen no, at no. all. No, no. Um, yeah. And Johnny Armist put in great showing. Very, very cool moves during that match. Um, Cena Vega got involved a lot as well. Didn't yeah. like that cool, like, hook around in the ring, which I like. I like she's that. a serious athlete. Maybe she should she's, be in the women's division. <laughs> she should be, yeah. She's awesome. Um, yeah, great, great match. Uh, ended during doing like a top rope DDT slash brain buster thing, which, uh, looks very cool. Although sadly, Injured Drew McIntyre. Yeah. Uh, and Drew tore his bicep. Apparently he held on, he held onto the ropes slightly too long. Yeah. And that tore his bicep, which, uh, sucks. It was going to be out a few months. Uh, apparently like three to six months. Ooh. Uh, that sucks. Do you think the plan was for Drew to lose it all along? Or uh, and they called it? From what I've, from what I've heard, it was, it was a plan all along. Drew him lose it. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, probably got on the main roster along with these other NXT guys who's been going up. Makes sense. Um, so, I mean, Drew. He has been there anyway, so he's more than ready. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, that's I'm gutted for him because me too. Um, I really like Drew, and yeah. I really just want him to do well in this WWE run. And I don't think he'll come back on NXT. I think he'll go straight to the main roster now. Probably, uh, probably won't come back for his rematch or anything like that. Yeah, um, because by the if it is three to six months, this will be forgotten now. Probably, yeah. And he'll, he'll just go straight to the main roster. I think. Uh, great for Andrade. I mean, Jesus. Uh, yeah. I did not see it coming at all. Yeah, holy shit. So many false finishes. Hmm, really good. Uh, when he did the double knees, oh, and yeah. Drew kicked out, I thought, no, there's no way Andrade's <laughs> winning here. Yeah, yeah. And I was just, I was incredible. I was, even the, the open, the vignette that was promoting the match, when Selena Vega says the words, Andrade is definitely going to win, I went, no, no, no he's mate. not. Yeah. Out loud as well. I was like, <laughs> yeah. No, he isn't. I, I must sound like an idiot. I just talk to myself. But, no, I do um, as well. I love myself and my cat who's sitting next to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, he isn't. Yeah. And then he wins. It makes me look a complete knob. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was cool. It was a really good match. Started off pretty slow, but, uh, I thought it was good. And I'm happy for Andrade, despite the fact he's a dick and didn't want to be in the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Way but at the same time, I'm, I'm gutted for Drew. Yeah. That's a real shame. But, uh, yeah, at the same time, I am pleased for Amos because uh, he's been a great showing. He's been a great showing this past few months. Like, matches against like Johnny Gargano. Selena Vega has helped. Yeah, Vega's really, really good. I like her a lot. Yeah, she's increased his stock no end. I think I said this last week, but yeah, um, yeah. Andrade is your new NXT champion now. I'd be interested to see where it goes because mm. obviously he's not going to be uh, in a sort of any sort of rematch feud with Drew. Yeah, which I imagine he probably would have been. Drew would have. 
had his rematch and then gone to the main roster. Probably. Like um like I said, probably enter into the Royal Rumble. Uh, like have cool. his rematch, probably take over wherever they are next. <laughs> um they did advertise it but I can't remember. Um wherever take over is take over is next, lose, then go to the main roster. That's how it works, isn't it? Yeah, NXT. Yeah. So sense. I don't know who's next. Who who's next, do you think? Uh could be Alistair Black. Could be Alistair Black, yeah. Very easily. Um don't know who else is not in main event picture in the NXT anymore. Um Voting Dream. Adam Cole. Here, here, not really. uh, Adam Cole could do it, yeah. Adam Cole essentially is a heel. Oh, yeah, but he's true, not a heel because Adam Cole Bebe. Bebe. So Very true. Because like someone Mad Sanis do it, like Eric Young or Eric um, Young's a heel, isn't he? I don't, I don't even understand who is and who. I who think Sanis is face at the minute. I think they can't sort of turn face when they went against Ultra Pain, but the Ultra Pain also sort of face now. I don't know. Right. See, this is it. all the confusion. <laughs> so you got Authors of Pain, who are, because after they had face Roderick Strong. Yeah, yeah. So confusing. Roderick Strong, you could go after him. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, Roddy could go after it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, God, who knows? Hmm. Interesting one. I look forward to seeing where it goes. Yes. NXT's me too. great. NXT is awesome. And then we had the War Games match. Mm. Which was, of course, uh, Sanity versus the Undisputed Era with uh, Roddy. No, Undisputed Era with Undisputed Era. And Authors of Pain with Roddy. Excuse me. Dressed as the Authors of Pain. <laughs> In cosplay, yes. <laughs> For fuck's sake. What is the deal with doing this at the minute? I don't know. That's very so, strange. You know what? Where, when the Authors of Pain came out, I was, I was sat there thinking, please don't come out dressed like the Authors of Pain. Please don't let that happen. Comes out wearing the Authors of Pain gear and mask. And it's yeah. like, no. God damn it. Just let him come out in his pissing zip-up jacket with, yeah, his, yeah. with his own music. Yeah, it's well, done. Like Kurt Angle with the shield or Triple H with the shield or whoever <laughs> else with the shield. <laughs> like, come out dressed as the shield. It's like, you don't need to do that. No. We get it. <laughs> Teaming up, we understand. This is... <laughs> fuck's sake uh, but yeah. uh yeah so uh, the war games match what did you think to it i thought the rules were convoluted and made no sense it's stupid yeah like the two... match can't be official until everyone's in there yeah and like the other teams in a cage for some reason in a shark cage buy our toys that's it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag uh, buy our toys yeah because they even had the toys on the announce desk yeah look at that new toys for christmas yeah, yeah and conveniently they're gonna <laughs> be in shark cages oh, my so goodness. Uh, hashtag buy our toys yeah <laughs> Um. Yeah, but it was it was a clusterfuck, but entertaining as hell. I thought <laughs> it was a clusterfuck. Once, once, it got, once yeah. it got going, like the first bit kind of made the sense because like one of just wait until everyone's in the match and right then I don't know. We'll just put everyone in the match all at the same time. Yeah, let them battle it out from the start. Yeah, I don't know. Rules are weird. Rules are really weird, but it was cool. Um, at one point it's very cool looking. Uh, superflex off the top of the cage onto everyone else, which yep. is kind of insane. Yep. <laughs> Um, just lots of eye spots. Um, poor bloody um, uh, German guy from Sanity. Oh, uh, Alexander, uh, Wolf. Alexander Wolf. Yeah, yeah. He got busted open on the table pretty bad. Yeah, look at the table's like a big splat of blood on the table. Ow. He's really impressed me recently. He's good. Yeah, like, like you him. look at him and you think, oh, this guy is just another big guy. Like he's he's another Eric Rowan. It's, yeah, but smaller. <laughs> but yeah, but um, but no, he's good. He's genuinely very good. And the crowd yeah. pop for him. He does cool moves. So fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Oakland, uh, so we didn't mention the news, and uh, Dungeon Brothers debuted this week on SmackDown. They did. And they were okay. Yeah, I, I yeah, liked uh, Eric Rowan's mask on the way to the ring. Yeah, it was cool. I thought that was pretty cool. I liked it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, cool move. It's just more made no sense. Um, but lots of big high spots, which I like. Um, and yeah, ended with, of all things, a knee to a chair to Eric Young's face. And uh, Anna Cole, baby, uh, picks up the win for Undisputed Hero. Yeah, uh, I mean, out of all the ways, out of all the high spots in the match, to end the match with like a, a knee to a chair to the face, yeah, seems a little bit of a um, what am I what am I looking for here? Yeah, it's like there's so many big moves in the match. It's like to end it on the knee. It's kind of just yeah, it's like they, could, they had so many other bigger moves they could end it on. Yeah, so why that? You could have ended <laughs> it with something completely insane. Yeah, it's but, super black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, whatever, but. Yeah, I mean, the Undisputed Era, in my opinion, were never going to lose. Yeah, yeah. They're a brand new team. Uh, these looks wrong. Yeah. Makes sense. Do you think Adam Cole's too small for WWE? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it'd work. You think? Yeah. So when Adam Cole goes to the main roster and he fights Braun Strowman, you think that works? <laughs> no, but then... <laughs> <laughs> but then Braun Strowman versus most people don't work. <laughs> Unless it's Brock Lesnar or something like that. Braun's mm-hmm. going to win. Because Lola Braun wins, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know. Um, I mean, again, I've talked, the same friend who I was talking to before, he was said he thinks Adam Cole is too small to work on TV. Mm. I like Adam Cole a lot. I've got a lot of time for the Undisputed Era. Adam, I've got, you know, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. I've got a lot of time for it. Oh, yeah. But, you know, when you think about it, I mean, Adam Cole is very small. He is a bit. But I think he could work. Booked right. Like, if you keep him as a team, booked right, I think they could be, they could be cool. Better on SmackDown. Yeah. Away from the... La- Raw is very much the land of the Giants. Very true. I mean, like, guy like Dean Ambrose isn't the biggest guy. And yet he's he's former WWE champion. He's done pretty well. The Miz isn't great. Isn't no, I mean, he's great, but, but he's Adam not Cole big. isn't isn't even <laughs> does isn't even as big as the Miz. Yes, he is. No, he's pretty lanky, but he's he's big you enough. Think he is? Yeah, I don't know, mate. Yeah, uh, I like Adam Cole. Maybe. Oh, I like him as well. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sort of disputing that, but it's just like how how does he work on the main roster because he is so small? Um, WWE is completely different to the Indies. True. Right? In the Indies, you can get away with it true. because. WWE, you know, there's not massive, massive guys on the indies. You know, you can have Adam Cole fighting the likes of Kenny Omega and, you know, other top stars from Japan and ROH, you know, like Jay Lethal and people like that because they're not bloody gigantic monsters of men. True. No pun intended, Braun Strowman. <laughs> but like, then you look on Raw, Brock Lesnar is the universal champion. Yeah. Um, you know, Braun Strowman is, you know, fucking enormous. Samoa <laughs> Joe, you know, people like that. It's it's yep. so hard to see somebody the size of Adam Cole go up against these people. But at the same time, WWE is sort of changing in that way as well. It's got the like, smaller guys are having more of a presence on the main on the main event picture, like Finn Balor, AJ Styles to be a champion. I know it's still not as big, uh, and Cole's still as big as uh, those guys. But I don't know. I think WWE is trying to change in more like an indie direction. While still having all the big guys as well, okay. just trying to cater for everyone. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I hope it, he's given the, the chance. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, to shine, but given the fact that he is a massive star, he is already. I mean, he was a big star mm. coming out of the Indies into WWE with NXT. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope he's given a chance. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just worry about these the the smaller guys, given yeah. how given WWE's history with smaller guys. Yeah. But yeah, we'll, we'll, it's not a sort of wait and see thing because I, I think it could work if booked right, but booking in WWE lately hasn't been great. <laughs> Either way, but, at yeah, the minute we'll they're see. doing well in NXT, so yeah, they must yeah. see something in him. Um, so, I mean, Triple H must see something in him yeah. to give him this current spotlight. Absolutely. But we'll see. Yeah. It's a good match. It's a good show. NXT takeover. Very good. A+. plus. A plus, absolutely. Yeah. Great, great match. Uh, great, great matches throughout. Also, we did, uh, in our predictions last week, um, give a prediction for Johnny Gargano against Pete Dunn. Oh, yeah. It wasn't on the main <laughs> show in the end, but it is on this week's NXT. It so is, yes. We, we'll take our predictions, watch NXT, and we'll give you the result next week. Oh, uh, yeah. Although, we both said the same thing, so predictions are going to be so the same anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they ended in a tie, basically. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, point each. So I think it's overall total two. I've lost it. Uh, it's overall total two, 13-11 to Sunny. There you go. There we go. And then Survivor Series. Survivor Series. Survivor Series was an interesting event. It was interesting, yes. Yeah. Interesting, interesting good word. Mm. Um, had some good, good moments. Had some less than good moments. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. Um, so we had like the three-star matches. We had the Elias versus Matt Hardy, which is new predictions on because we were like, announced on the mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. That was fine. It's the best thing for an empty crowd because WWE are bad at bringing people in. I don't understand what, <laughs> why this is now. I don't understand what's going on. It's dumb. Why can't they just get people into arenas on time? Yes, or, who knows? I mean, because WWE are very strict with start times and finish times. Yeah. Uh, at least start times. Uh, they do overrun sometimes, of course. But with start times, they're bang on. Hmm. Maybe try and get people into the arena on time then. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's just make one effort. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we had uh, Enzo versus Kalisto, uh, which was pretty shy, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, Enzo won, obviously. Both said Enzo had to Enzo to win. Yeah. And they're uh, both at a point there. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Then we had uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus Bruce Ango on the pre-show. Um, <sighs> it, was, it was fine. <laughs> sure. I mean... The white guys won. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens won, obviously. Good. Thank, thank Christ, yeah. Part of me felt like they were going to lose because of <laughs> punishment. Yeah. From being sent home from uh, the European tour, but I'm glad that didn't happen. Yes, me too. Jesus Christ. But uh, yeah, sure, it was, it was fine. 
It was fine. Don't Correct forgive. result, anyway. Yes, definitely. And then the uh, main show started, and they had like all five announcers all at once for the SmackDown War. Just yeah. Too yeah. many. It doesn't work with three, let yes. alone five. Seriously. Oh, here comes. So yes, the first match of the night was, as we predicted, uh, the Shield versus the New New Day. Baby! Baby! And it was really good. It was good. I liked it a lot. Uh, I thought it would be good as well. Yeah. It was, it was obviously just, they both had like, great matches yeah. uh, coming into this, and uh, yeah, really, really good. Glad to see the Shield uh, as one on pay-per-view. Yeah. Instead of somebody filling in or whatever. <laughs> but it's good to see Roman back. Um, said no marks ever. But yeah. uh, we're not marks like that. Yeah. We, we like women. Yeah. Um, it's weird because like, some moments like people were booing Roman like when he got tagged in but then other moments when he was in a power bomb he was getting cheered it's like make me mind honestly crowd. they've confused <laughs> the crowd so much by <laughs> putting the shield back together yeah because now they they, they, they want to cheer the shield but they, they still are Roman. pretending they don't like Roman yeah like, but no boo, bad Roman but boo yay. but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. confused <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah really, really good match um, at one point um what happened? Well, that's it. Uh, bring it back. Um, oh yeah, that was it. So Biggie had uh, Biggie was on Xavier's shoulders. Kobe yep. did like a jump over Biggie, and that did like a big splash, and then Biggie did a splash. That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> um, there's a double midnight hour at one point with Seth and Dean on Biggie's shoulders. He's strong, strong He's fella. Very strong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was cool as well. That got broken up. Uh, but yeah, because uh, Roman speared Biggie uh, onto the pin, onto the guy on in the pin. Yeah, which looked cool. Uh, Biggie and Xavier Woods got taken out outside the ring. Roman's left, so Kevin Kingston on his own against Roman Reigns. Spear, double power bomb up the top rope or middle rope, and uh, Shield win. Yep. Um, we we said that the Shield would win. I couldn't see any way that they were going to lose. No, yeah, not to New <laughs> Day. Um, not Ooh, when the yeah. Shield are looking so strong, and they want to make the Shield look strong. Yep, and they want to make Roman look strong. I of hate course. saying that because obviously <laughs> CM Punk, CM Punk, but they they want Roman Reigns is their biggest fucking star. Yeah, right. He is the new John Cena, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so, you, Marks, I'm afraid you are going to have to lump it. You're stuck with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you don't like it, go watch TNA. P.E. Williams is fighting in the main event in Canada. There Who you cares? go. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the Shield won to no real surprise, but it was a great match and I knew it would be. Yeah, it was good. Good stuff. They both had Shield to win, obviously, to do to, to, uh, to both of us. Yep. Uh, we just do the 5-on-5 five five Survivor Series match for the women. Yep. Uh, Becca Lynch, Natalia Carmella, Tamina with Lana, and Naomi versus Elisa Fox, Bailey, Shasta Banks, Nia Jax, <sighs> and Asuka. Mm. And it was fine. No, it was just fine. <laughs> and to be honest, it ended as predicted. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Ended as it should have done. Uh, bit of a sloppy start. Uh, Becky Lynch got eliminated very quickly, too quickly. I don't understand that. Very weird one, yeah. Yeah, it's very weird. I don't really get it, but someone's got to be eliminated first, I guess. I guess so. So, yeah, Bailey eliminated uh, Becky with, like, rolled up. Uh, Tamina eliminated Bailey after a super kick from Carmella. Uh, followed by Splash, like the Superfly Splash. Mm-hmm. Uh, super, 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 super fly. fly. I didn't remember what wave. Nia's ass got eliminated via count out after two super kicks and a dive from Naomi and a splash from Tamina. Bullshit. Yeah. I guess that's the best way to eliminate Nia. Yeah, if you have to eliminate Tamina. Because if you have to have bit. Oscar win it, the best way to eliminate the st- quite easily the strongest and biggest um, on there. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, probably a, a bullshit count out. Sure. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, Alicia, Alicia Fox got eliminated by Naomi because she forgot to kick out. Well done. Yeah. It's ridiculous <laughs> because obviously Naomi went, uh, transitioned straight into the submission. Yeah. Like that's what, that's how Alicia Fox was supposed to be eliminated. Yep. Instead, she just didn't kick they out. They didn't, she didn't kick out and they also didn't announce that she'd been eliminated. Yeah. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah. This is why Alicia Fox should have been released. <laughs> you probably don't remember. Bollocks like this. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, so we had Zazie Banks eliminated Naomi right after that with a bank statement. Yep. Uh, Ask eliminated Carmella after she kicks her face off. Yep. Ouch. Uh, rip. Did, rip. <laughs> Natalia eliminated Zazie Banks with a sharpshooter. And then it was just Asuka left standing against uh, Natalia and Tamina. Uh, Asuka eliminated Tamina with an arm bar. <laughs> Arm bar. 
And then we had the sharpshooter counted into a knee bar, which just looked pretty cool. Knee bar. Knee bar. Uh, and then Asuka won with Asuka lock, which is good. So it um, had um, um, Asuka standing tall, which is the right way to do it because yep, she's and new and dominant and all that. And good. Yeah, they won't want her to lose for ages. <laughs> no, no, no. Until she eventually wins the championship. Absolutely. Um, that's what we good. It. Yeah, I mean, that, um, that's exactly what we said would happen. Yep. And that's exactly the correct booking as well. Yep, absolutely. So... Yeah, cool. So once again, points away to us at 3-3. Yep. Going into the next match, which was Baron Corbin versus The Miz. The Miz. Uh, and Maurice in the crowd, which is nice. Nice yeah. touch. Um, yeah, it was cool. Uh, cool match. I liked it. What it was think? a cool match. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I liked the, uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, the kayfabe build up mm. with the rivalry, uh, of them beefing on social media or whatever. But yeah, I thought it was a good match. Yeah. Very cool. At one point, uh, Corbin threw Miz into the barricade, barricade one for the Maurice. Yeah. It was like, this is what a meal man does. Yeah, it was and very Rocky 3. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Hey, woman. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, Rocky 3. <clears throat> Finn doesn't watch movies. <laughs> What's a movie? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, cool match. Um, ended with Corbin uh, hitting it. End of days, out of nowhere. Yeah. After taking out uh, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas on the outside. So Miz was doing the uh, the corner drop kicks. Oh, yes. Made um, famous by the Miz. Yeah, made famous definitely by the Miz. <laughs> uh, he went, he went for one too many. Corbin exploded out the corner. End of days. One, two, three. Game over. Yes. Nice. Correct booking. Yes, agreed. Um, and after the match, uh, Corbin grabbed the mic, was like, "Hey, Miz, my hand went up. Your mouth went shut. Oh, I like but it." But yeah, but he said your mouth went closed, and he didn't oh, really did he? work oh, yeah, as he much. Did, didn't he? Yeah. My my hand went up. Your mouth went closed. Closed. Shit. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good, sure. enough. good job. Yeah. Uh, so I had Baron Corbin to win this. You had the Miz. So that's a point to me. Yeah, in me. hindsight, I'm not sure why I had the Miz. Uh, yeah, yeah. It got to make sense to Baron Corbin because he needed it. He needed it much more. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, and then looking strong. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, four three to me. Yay. Yay. So then we had uh, Cesaro and Sheamus, the bar, versus the Usos. Uh, Sheamus. Oops. Oh. Uh, Sheamus looked even more ridiculous than usual. He had like frosted tips on this mohawk. <laughs> And they, they were like, uh, they, they, the, the, my hook was like separated as well. Yeah, very strange. Yeah. Uh, but good match though. I liked it. Very good match. Yeah. Yeah, but it was Both fine. teams are great. Both teams are really, really good. Usos have been really great recently. But oh, yeah. I mean, both teams have been really great recently. But I think the Usos is more commendable because they basically, and everyone couldn't be arsed with them. <laughs> yeah. They turn heel and all of a sudden they're great again. So it's like. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Fair play. Um, well, I enjoyed the match. Lots of cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> things happened wrestling yes. moves and holds happened during is, the match uh, at one point it looked like Cesaro was going to win with like the sharp tutor of the Seamus bro kicks uh, the other Uso um, I can't, don't know which one's right I can't, can't tell them it, it's, it's so difficult <laughs> and it's like a crazy like power bomb into like a throwing drop which was counted because uh, they're doing like a Cesaro and Seamus trying to do a, a double team move but uh, one of the other Uso is everyone that was got um, Seamus on his shoulders and the power bomb and the like into Simone drop, it look cool. Go watch it. Cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then Uso, Uso's like did a bunch of super kicks, for, super kick party for everyone. Uh, Frog splash and Uso's won. Yeah. Um, cool. Cool. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I mean, at this point, the scores were sort of tipping towards Raw, so SmackDown had to <laughs> yeah, probably pretty, try and claw it back a little bit. Pretty much. And uh, yeah, so I had Uso to win that. Just another point to me. Yeah. Yay. Five three to me. I didn't think Cesaro and Sheamus would lose. I really didn't. But when, as I was gradually watching it and seeing the scores, I was thinking, oh, God. Yeah. Because obviously we had no idea what order the matches were going to be in. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. And, yeah, when, when I saw that Raw were really sort of trying to, going to run away with it, it's like, there's no way this isn't going to sort of be some sort of screwy scoreline. And, and yeah. Sort of, yeah. Makes sense. Then we had, uh, Charlotte Flair versus Alexa Bliss, uh, Chamber Champion. Yeah. Obviously, um, it was it was fine. Yeah, it's been it's kind of a slow start, but it got better as it went on. I thought. I think this this the same could be said for a lot of Charlotte matches recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it ended with uh, this going for a sparkle splash, uh, but Charlotte got her knees up. You're still going with the sparkle splash. Yep, it's going to be called never that. Never gonna never gonna let that go, are you? Nope, never let it go. Fair enough. Best name ever. Bliss, bliss, sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> yeah, uh, so generic. Uh, <laughs> uh, then that's right. They had a big boot followed by a figure eight and one uh, because yeah. Flair. Yeah, yeah, because Ric <laughs> Flair. Because 
Because Ric Flair. I mean, that's it. That's it. Pretty much. Yeah. It looks fine. Decent, decent enough match. Sure. Um, I guess that's that's fine. Um, personally, I would have liked to have seen Alexa win it, but um, you know, we both. I think we both had Charlotte to win. We did, yeah. Because Ric Flair. Yep. Pretty much. So you're not going to have Charlotte win the championship on SmackDown with floods of tears and Ric Flair and all that sort of stuff just for it to lose to the Raw Women's Champion a few days later at at the pay-per-view. Yeah. Just no. Um, The result itself doesn't really affect Alexa in any way, in my opinion. No, no. She's still the Raw Women's Champion and she still looks strong on TV every week. Yep. So, fine. Yep. Daily fine. Uh, It's very much a throwaway pay-per-view, to be honest, Survivor Series, because this brand supremacy stuff is bollocks. (laughs) Yeah, who cares? Who fucking cares? It's all about titles. Yeah, it's all about storylines and titles not brand supremacy because let's be honest everyone watches both shows and no one could care less <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah it doesn't matter uh, then we had probably the match of the night AJ Styles versus Barack mm. Lesnar so much better than it expected yes it's very very good I mean, we always Brock. call Brock on sort of <laughs> I mean since Dean Ambrose basically called Brock for being not being asked to do anything yeah but um, hey hats off Fair yeah. enough. Good match. Brock gave a shit once. Brock Hold gave him. a shit. <laughs> but this is the thing, right? Brock obviously didn't want Jinder Mahal. So they took the belt from Jinder. Makes sense. Put it on somebody who Brock could at least, or could at least get a deep. Could you, could you imagine Jinder versus Brock? No. In hindsight, when <laughs> you think about it. As soon as they announced it, like, there's no way it's going to happen. Jinder <laughs> stiff. No way. Brock doesn't give a shit. Then Brock would have just probably squashed him and it would have been bollocks. Yeah. But um, obviously Brock wanted to work with AJ and they they produced a really great match. They really did. Yes, they did. The one thing I didn't like, um, before getting into this, uh, Raw on, or SmackDown was on top. So if Smack, if AJ had won, SmackDown would have won the whole pay-per-view, which would have made the main event completely pointless. Yeah. So it's obvious that Brock was going to win going into this. Of course. It's like, oh, that, God damn it, that, that, That's the problem, <laughs> you see, because it, it renders the main event completely pointless. That's yeah. why the scores have to even up before the main event. Exactly. It's, Absolute crap. It's bollocks. That's why you don't, that's why you just don't do it. Exactly, yeah. It's, don't you have a score? Don't keep score. Matter. Yeah. But the commentary yeah. is always like, which is also stupid. Like, Because Corey Graves obviously neutral because he's on both. Yeah, yeah. Then you've got Booker T and Saxton like, oh yeah, Raw's... Why do it? Because yeah, it's totally. obvious way that the way that this is going to go. Yep. It's just a shame. Um, but it didn't hurt the match. The match was great. No, it didn't hurt the match, no. Um, so yeah, Brock was manhandling AJ for a good first half of the match. Mm. Um, as he does, throwing him around the ring. Suplex on suplex. Uh, but then AJ starts rising back. Hits a couple of forearms on the outside. Uh, it's beautiful looking forward with the splash of the, of the ropes. It's great. Yep. Uh, got him in a calf crusher, which uh, Brock sold really well. Uh, crowd went nuts for it. When Brock gives a shit, like, he's really good. <laughs> yeah, he is, yeah. Like, when he, he first came into it and he was, like, brand new to professional wrestling and he was a big monster, it was awesome. Mm. He gave a shit and he was awesome. Yeah, it was great. But, uh, yeah, so that was really good. Uh, Brock, like, grabbed AJ's head and smashed his, like, head against the rap to get mm. out of the crowd crusher. It was cool. Um, AJ hit a foot on the forearm, he was got kicked out of. Went for the second one, got caught into the F5, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, I predicted that that, would, that exact thing would happen <laughs> pretty much yeah um, but it was cool though because uh, Brock was selling the leg still with his yep. daddy F5 so uh, AJ did damage I read today that he was selling it backstage as well so really? much to the point where people thought it was real Oh, <laughs> and it, <laughs> it, it wasn't but yeah. uh, I've also read that Vince McMahon doesn't want anybody to kick out of the F5 until Wrestlemania so yep. spoilers guys Roman Wins. kicks out of the F5 at Wrestlemania yep yeah. lol Roman wins lol Roman wins yeah like as I said to you um the day Brock beats everyone and then Roman beats Brock therefore Roman beats everyone <laughs> which is uh, which is Vince McMahon's wet dream yes it know. is yeah. <laughs> Roman win, Roman's better than everyone yep a lot of Roman wins great match great match <laughs> yes very good match good job so uh, for some reason I went with AJ Styles uh, to win it's kind of obvious that wasn't going to happen foolish uh, I kind of went with Kyber fingers crossed hoping for like a shock win sure yeah but um no, so you get a point for that one. Six the hope five. that kills you, Finn. It is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so six five, still certainly. So that brings us to our main events: mm-hmm. five on five match. <gasps> Kurt Angle, Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, and Triple H. Hell of versus, a team. Hell of a team. Versus Shane McMahon, John Cena, do 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 do, Randy Orton, Bobby Roode, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Hell of a team. Hell of a team. Great, great teams <laughs> on paper. Yes. Fine match. 
I guess. Weird ending. Strange <laughs> ending because Triple H. Oh, yeah, lol Triple H wins. Lol Triple H wins with six days notice. Yeah, very strange. Um, quite my notes. So many notes in this mess. Jesus Christ. Um, who took out who? Let's try and find. Not make sense of this mess. <laughs> Uh, I like at the start now Triple H like too sweeted Finn mm. that was cool yeah season desist season desist yeah <laughs> um, the Saints started off by attacking Braun Strowman from behind smart move mm-hmm. um, Randy Orton and Samoa Joe had to stand off had a little bit of a fight which is cool nice they had a battle with Nakamura standing in standing had a stand off and had a fight it's a crowd witness for very yep. cool um, NXT chance did like a too sweet head poke to Nakamura which is cool uh, then Triple H was in against Nakamura. Then had Triple H versus Rude. And Angle versus Rude. And Angle versus Nakamura. Very cool looking. Just very cool like, potential matches. Mm. Um, I like that. Good start. And then it kind of went shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Rude and, Shak- and Nakamura got eliminated first. Big mistake in my opinion. Two big up and comers. Just get them out of the way. Good, good to see uh, Nakamura and Bobby Rude eliminated first. But a young talent like John Cena and Randy Orton. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> that, to be honest, that was always going to happen. Yeah. Stupid, but it was always going to happen. Yeah. The the egos in that match, like the big superstars in that match, <laughs> ridiculous. Crazy. Yes. And seeing that Bailey didn't anything to this match as well, which is weird. He came out with this new ugly purple and lime green and purple yeah, shirt. Yeah, everyone else is wearing a blue t-shirt. John Cena's wearing Luigi's hat. Well, Luigi's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, ugly, ugly shirt. Um, so yeah, uh, Cena pinned to Mojo, which... Again, dumb. Um, uh, bunch of stuff happened. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Triple H. Uh, yes, yeah. Ended with Triple H and um, Triple H, Braun Strowman and Kurt Angle against uh, Sherrick Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seemed noblest for Shane. But then, out of nowhere, as uh, Kurt Angle had the ankle lock on Shane for way too long, uh, Shane just tapped out. Um, also, we also got Sami Zayn and... Uh, uh, Kevin Owens out of nowhere yep. attacked Shane no effect on the outcome of the match at all chased off by a steel chair <laughs> great that was pointless yeah I think Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are going to Raw oh yeah for sure um, definitely uh, so then yeah obviously uh, Triple H attacked uh, Kurt Angle while he was doing the ankle lock because Triple H yeah so it looked like Triple H and Shane Randall going to team up oh this could be cool this could be interesting but nope Triple H turns on Shane Rand pedigree Pins him and lol Triple H wins. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, I'll be nuts. When I saw the pedigree to angle, I thought, okay, that's that's Triple H gonna side with Shane, and okay, sure. But then when he turns on Shane, so what the fuck is going on? It's like, all right, so they're gonna have Triple H versus Kurt Angle. Okay, it's, it's which fine. we sort of knew was gonna happen anyway. Yeah. I kind of like this. we've seen Triple H versus Kurt Angle before though we, I'd kind of like to see like a new guy like Kurt Angle versus I don't know Finn Balor why not sure or Tinsley Nakamura why not or or Samoa Joe that'd have been cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool but, H. but no. no Triple H versus Kurt Angle because Triple H yeah I guess so so Triple H on yeah on six days notice uh, wins Survivor Series yeah and Team Raw uh, wins lol uh, yes and Braun Strowman not happy <laughs> grab, grab Triple H by the throat chokes him out in the corner yep. don't you ever do this to me blah 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 um, yeah cool cool for Braun Strowman to stand so tall at the end of the pay-per-view yes did you see Triple H walking to the Titan Tron after, uh, after the event <laughs> oh yeah I did hear about that actually yeah, yeah. that's funny it's quite funny there's like a little viral video going around of it someone yeah. filmed it on the phone Perfect. Triple H was selling the uh, effects of Braun Strowman yes a couple of uh, power slams and he walked straight into it I don't know if he, don't know if he meant to do it or not uh, I think it, I think he did. I think he's like <laughs> cheesing it up. Yeah, proper cheesing it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, weird weird ending, but decent start. Weird ending. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could have done without the ending, but hey, why have a consistently good weekend of wrestling when you can WWE it up? <laughs> exactly. So also, yeah, no Jason Jordan. We got we got to both predict that Jason Jordan would play into this somehow, but uh, nope. No, to be seen. No, nowhere. Shrug. Maybe they've given up with that already. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was on Raw this week, uh, taking on Braun Strowman. It's kind of ended when, with um, something happening, which I don't remember. Sure, yeah, good. <laughs> uh, where's my notes? 
Um, it will. Um, what did happen? Uh, oh, that's right. Um, uh, Billy Kane came back, didn't he? Uh, <sighs> yeah, Kane came yeah. back, attacked him with a chair. Um, like hit his throat into the chair, and then Braun Strowman sending his throat really well, and just got minted back. People trying to help, and he's like, "Oh, they need help," and that refused to help, and kind of interrupted back, which is fine. So Kane sure. and Strowman's going to happen again at some point. Great. Yeah. Probably Christmas Day. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So that was Survivor Series. Yes. Um. So yeah, scores was uh, both had SmackDown to win. Neither was get a point for that one. Uh, so ended with uh, me with six and you with five. So I got ah, the point. Ah, excellent. So you're coming back. I'm bringing it back. 13-12, grand total. Ooh. Yes. One still pay, plenty, one pay still view one pay-per-view left of the year. Yes. I can, I can end it with a tie. Ooh. The ones then. Both had to play Bobby 3D. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Interesting. Okay. We'll figure it out. So, um, like we said last week, we're going to try some new stuff on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. So next month, because Oof. the pay-per-view is Class of Champions... We're going to go back and we're going to watch an old class of the champions. Yes. So we're going to do this every month. So if whatever the pay-per-view is that month, we'll go back and watch one of the older ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. So obviously Royal Rumble is in January. We'll go back and watch a Royal Rumble. Yep. All right. Um, you can pick which year if you wish to. So next year. So next, when you hear this, if you want to go see us watch a specific class of champions, pick which one and we'll go watch that. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And then we'll talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So yeah. Also, we are now bringing back the WWE Encyclopedia. Yay. All right. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through it A to Z. Instead of picking a random letter, <laughs> we're going to go through it A to Z and read the weirdest thing from that particular letter. Makes sense. So, starting with A, of course, I'm no going to read out Avatar. Ooh. <clears throat> is he a blue guy from, like, the moon? Yes. Yeah. It's exactly <laughs> that. It is exactly that. Oh, was Avatar. <laughs> right. Weight, £235. Ooh. From Parts Unknown. Oh, ah, of course. And his English move is the Frog Splash. Mm. And he's dressed like uh, a poor man's Ultimo Dragon. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Right. The enigmatic competitor combined martial arts with high-flying moves and made his debut on Monday Night Raw in October 1995. Ooh. Unlike ma- most masked superstars, he didn't put a mask on until he was in the ring and removed it after victory. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, his version of the frog splash was a bit different. To begin, he'd stand on the sternum of his opponent, jump from their body and land on them with a body splash. Yeah, it sounds familiar. I think I might have read it before, actually. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Avatar became a fan favourite as he battled villains like Psycho Sid, Isaac Yankum DDS, okay. Brooklyn Brawler and Bradshaw. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> During his stay in WWE, he formed an exciting tag team with fellow aerialist Aldo Montoya, in brackets, just incredible. Oh, uh, yeah. By March 1997, Avatar vanished from WWE, f- vanished from WWE, full stop. <laughs> Even if it was only for a brief period of time, Avatar showcased his talents where the only the select few are given the opportunity. Hmm. That is the weirdest thing in A. Everything else is pretty... Uh, it's pretty normal. standard stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Makes we're sense. going to continue to do that on every episode. Uh, just uh, give a little bit of uh, something different to the podcast. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So cool. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. This has been episode two of the Graps Cast with Sonny and Finn. Yeah. We are a wrestling podcast. Did you? It's going to be posting on a Friday on SoundCloud and YouTube and iTunes and anywhere else that you can get podcasts yeah thank you so much for listening this week I'm Sonny I've been and we'll speak to you next time thank you very much guys goodbye thank you very much goodbye